Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at running an open source AI LLM on your own machine. This should work for pretty much anyone with a decent CPU. It's designed to run on the CPU. You don't need a GPU. You don't need a graphics. You don't need a graphics card. Um, you can run it with a graphics card if you have one and it'll improve the speed with which you receive your results. But as long as you have a computer that's only, I think my computer is almost 20 years old. Uh, it's like 15 years old. That's the CPU. And the GPU is about 10 years old. And I get great results from it. So, yeah, let's jump into it. The first thing you'll want to do is, uh, what I'm doing is I got this nice little user interface built by GPT for all these folks here. Built a nice little application that runs on my desktop. And uh, all you need to do to get this is go to gpt4all.io here. And you'll get thrown to this web page. You get a couple of different installers for different operating systems. Should meet the large majority of operating systems that people are using here. And that should get you to my next screen. Uh, where I am right here, I have the application open on my machine. Now the real power of using these open source models comes in when you can interject your own documents or your own code base and start asking questions about that. That's what I really like about these models and what I really like about this application. Uh, I'm still learning it. It's not perfect yet, um, but I've made huge progress and I want to show you how to get started and get you up to speed. So once you're on this screen, the first thing you'll want to do uh, the first thing you want to do is decide where you want to store all this data. So that would be uh, click on the little the gear over here and then that download path. That's where it's going to save all of your models. So I have two different hard drives. I have one that's a lot bigger, uh, just a regular hard drive. And I save my models there because they're really big and they take up a lot of memory. So that's where I save my model. Uh, another detail you're going to want to take into consideration is your CPU threads. Uh, you can do this with Task Manager, Control, Shift, Escape. Should open up your Task Manager. Manager. I got four. Uh, I have four threads, so I decided to do three so I can still kind of do things on my computer while I'm running the model. That's one of the important details I would take into consideration when you start when you start running this. I would definitely have Task Manager open when you're running the, the model so you can kind of see what your usages are on your machine. Uh, right now you can see my CPU is getting maxed out. I'm going to be replacing my CPU soon so looking forward to that. But yeah, these are going to be the two pieces of uh, information that you're going to want to really hyper focus on if you're just getting set up. Uh, much of the rest you can kind of leave at default. If you're trying to get the GPU going, uh, you should see it under a device right here. Uh, that's my GPU. It's a decent GPU, um, meaning it can actually like assist with this token generation, um, but it's probably one of the first GPUs that ever could, so it's not a very good GPU for uh, models here, but it's good enough. And if you have a GPU that can help you with this, um, just be wary. Uh, the, the, one, the one field that I changed, that I needed to change to get it to work with my GPU, I, I think I had to lower the GPU layers here, I believe it was a little bit higher, and then it stopped overloading my VRAM and I was able to start using my GPU when I started doing the token model generation. And that was really nice. So those are a couple of the settings that I would look into and before I'd start downloading the model and starting to run stuff, uh, pretty important setup parts. But next I would look in, uh, next we can download the models. The fun begins. So Llama 3 is the one that I've been kind of primarily using. I also downloaded, Mis downloaded Mistral here. All you do is click download and it drops it in that folder for you. You can see that the uh, the file size is pretty big. You have um, you have four gigabytes of uh, 
hard drive space, and then you're going to need to use 8 gigabytes of RAM. So there are a little bit of some base minimum requirements to run your model. You're going to need probably about uh, at least 8 gigabytes of RAM, as it's saying here. You probably might probably want some more than that. And then the CPU, as long as it's one of the newer generation ones, um, mine's pretty old, and it's able to do it. It's pretty impressive. Um, more models. You could also get ChatGPT in here if you'd like. Uh, but the one that one other one you're going to want to download is SBERT. This is how you start to use documents on your machine or text files like code. This is how you can use those piece that extra pieces of information. You can create embeddings. It creates the embeddings for you. It runs the SBERT code to create the embeddings and make your model smart on the information that you give it. Awesome tool. So that's what I want to show next. Uh, right now I have my embeddings loading into my local docs right now. So how did I do that? Well, the way you get your embeddings to load into your local docs is by first you just create a name that's whatever name you want for your document doesn't matter and then folder path so you'll browse to the folder in which your file is located you don't actually click on the file so once you have the folder path and name you'll just click add here uh, there's a couple of rules that i one really important rule that i'd like to cover uh when you before you start doing the embeddings uh, it could be a little frustrating to get working if you don't do this right the first time which is um, remember, it wants the folder location, and then inside the folder, it wants either a text file, an MD, an RST, or PDF file. So I put all my code, uh, I generated some code on the side that re, uh, I created a little Python script. I can show if, if, anyone's at, if anyone needs to see it, but a little Python script that put all my code into one text file, and then then my folder location points to where that text file is located so how did i get to this uh this page here this is a little a documentation page that the gpt for all folks put together for us it's on the main window here so you could click on that and then it should open up that page for you. Uh, there's, if you have other questions, you can check it out right here too. Um, the part that I'm looking at is uh, local docs, though. This is the really cool stuff here. So, um, I don't know if the embeddings will be ready by the time I'd like to start running, but I can show you what I've gotten in the past, which is really impressive. So here, uh, you have memory. You have your chat windows. So you can save all your chats just like you would using ChatGPT, which is really nice. So you can see here, um, I have uh, how uh, my results were in the past. So let me show you how to run the model real quick, actually. So to, to run the model, and then we'll go into the embeddings. Maybe, maybe the embeddings will be done here. To, to, to load the model, you just click on... Uh, you should have the drop down here. Once you finish downloading, you should have this drop down here. You just click on your model here. And it should load. Oh, let's go new chat, actually. It is a little finicky. Uh, sometimes I've noticed I had to kind of like just restart the application. If you ever get caught up like this, Definitely recommend just restarting the application. Now, every time you restart the application, it will restart your embeddings. So I would uh, shy away from that if um, if you want to kind of save yourself some time. Just be patient with it. You can see my model did finally load here. Um, I would like to just... There we go. There's the new chat. So here, we'll load in Llama 3. We'll just say hello. Uh, it's not going to work with my embeddings just yet, but 
at least you'll get to see how it operates. So here you can see the CPU usage. It's maxing out my CPU. I definitely need a better one. But then I know when the model is um, when the model starts generating tokens here. You'll see it in the lower lower right hand side, and that's how you know. That's when you're gonna start seeing it talk back to you, and that's when I start seeing my. Um, there we go. The GPU is going. That's these spikes in GPU are generally an indicator to me that it's starting. If you're just using CPU, then maybe you'll see something similar on the CPU side. You might see something similar over there. So now we have a, a response generating. Usually, it it says. Yeah, there's the speed in the lower right hand side. Mine's going really slow. I think my GPU didn't. Another reason you really want to keep uh, keep your task manager open if you're trying to use the GPU, you can kind of monitor your usage if it's using your GPU or not. Looks like my GPU is not getting the optimal. I'm usually able to get it set to sit around 30. Yeah, here it's uh, it's, it's giving me a, a little bit of chatter. It's probably because I'm doing the, lo the local docs load. Actually, yeah, when you're loading embeddings, you generally don't want to load your embeddings at the same time as you're trying to talk to the model. I've noticed uh, it's loading the embeddings takes a lot of CPU load. And so it's struggling to uh, it's struggling to create an output while I'm loading my embeddings. So usually you want to let those embeddings load. That's the file with all, all my uh, my code, or it might be your PDF document, whatever you you want to uh, have the model learn, so you can ask it questions about it. So definitely let the embeddings finish loading. Uh, let your CPU usage go down and then you'll get much better optimization. Um, so you can see my model talking to me while those embeddings are loading. If they're done loading in a short amount of time, maybe we can see if we get some live results. Uh, but I just paused it, so you have a nice easy way to pause it if you need to. Really convenient. Uh, let me show you some of the code that I got it to do in the past, which was phenomenal. So here's some of the results I had with my embeddings. So I say hi to the model. Uh, this is Llama 3. You say I was able to say hi to the model, and it immediately acknowledged that uh, conversation about a code snippet. All I did was say hi. There's no history beyond this. But this is a great indicator that it knows my document uh, has code. And you can see here in the context, uh, it has, sometimes this is really spot on. Sometimes it's kind of like, I don't know what it's looking at here. But uh, it, it clearly knows what my code is. And I was able to ask a very simple two, three sentence question about my code. And the response it gave me was beyond impressive. It knew my coding language. It knew where the code I was looking for my question to be answered. Uh, let me show that with the context right here. It knew in my code what I was looking for. And it even codes in the same style. It's mimicking my style. I was using React.js in my project. So all of these where it, it, it explains some of this is even like directly referenced. These are variable names that I'm using throughout my code. Um, so yeah, just this basic, basic question. Now I did run in, I have been running into a lot of hurdles with mine where I said, here, can you just put it all together? So. I actually had it, I put all of my code, about 10,000 lines of code in here, into my embeddings. 
And I asked it, hey, can you create a, a full solution, front end, back end, database? And it struggles for some reason with my embeddings. I think there's something I need to do differently with maybe the way that I'm combining my code together or something. I don't know, it'd be great to hear feedback from anyone who maybe solves this issue. But yeah, I start to get gibberish sometimes. I'm not sure what caused it, but um, yeah, this response right here was amazing. And I'm uh, in the process of making this work for what I need to. I don't have the hardware right now to make it work. Uh, once I upgrade my CPU, I should be able to really run this guy. My embeddings are still loading, so I don't think I'll be able to get to that in this video. But hopefully I covered the, the gist here. Hopefully you have a good sense of what's going on here. Um, is there any other pieces of information that I changed? I think for the local docs, uh, I did modify this variable. I think it's by default three, and I changed it to, to one during my debugging process, but I wasn't able to to get it to stop spitting out gibberish. So I'm not sure what was causing gibberish in some circumstances, but not others. But yeah, that's all it takes to, to run the model. You can switch models, you can start a new chat. And yeah, big shout out to these guys, GPT for all. This was really cool and eye-opening and I'm super optimistic about this. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video and uh, have fun with uh, your open source models. Have fun working locally with uh, with Llama or Mistral or whatever you decide. All right. See you in the next one. Take care.